something, went into a paddock, and up forward to it. Well, hello everybody, it's uh, Suffolk Andy here at a little place called Trimley St. Martin. And I bet you're surprised there's a church here. Another old church. But the problem with this place, there's two churches side by side. One's in a bit of disrepair, as you can see. But one church, two church. Why? Well, I'm going to tell you. The story goes that 400 years ago, the family that run this part of the world had uh, two daughters. And those daughters fell out with each other. Wouldn't speak. Wouldn't do anything together. And it got so bad when they uh, reached maturity, they wouldn't even worship together. So one sister built this church and the other sister built this church and apparently they never spoke again so that's why you got two churches at Trimley St Martin now what I'm going to say we've all heard these urban legends and this is a story what was told to me when I was a kid um, I did look it up and I couldn't find any reference to it whatsoever so it's probably an urban legend but everybody here, around here will tell you that same story as I've just told you. Two sisters, falling out, built their own churches. I'm now going to have a little walk across into the cemetery. Apparently there's some very interesting gravestones over there. Going back a few hundred years. I'm going to see if I can find them. And uh, then we get on with the ride. The two churches at Trimley. Well, boys and girls, I'm... Uh Hope you enjoyed that little story about the churches and the two feuding sisters. Yeah, this is uh, the marina down here on the banks of the Orwell. As you can see, uh, some nice boats here. I'll go down to the bottom here. And I couldn't hell these bloody things. Yeah, we get down to the bottom here. All right, if you can see in front of me all the cranes and whatever, if you can remember the other... I think it was last week I'd done one from Felixstowe Port and Langard Fort. That's the other side of there. So if we look straight through where this boat is, that's Harridge through there, Shotley over there, and if we go down the river here, we come to Ipswich. So we're actually down the river all well. Nice to see it's full tide. Yeah, going back down here, you'll see this light chip, this big old red thing. Well, when my boys were little, they were in the Sea Cadets and that used to be their base, but not here, it was in Ipswich Docks. And it was there for years and years and years. And the kids used to clean it up and look after it, have a bit of discipline, you know, it's like being a little Navy ship. And the kids loved it. And then somebody said, we don't want it here anymore, but if you want to keep it here, you've got to pay all this rent. So in the end, it was sold under the under the kids and brought down here and it's uh, like their clubhouse thing so well done Haven Port Yacht Club for nicking this boat off the kids that give them many many years of happiness and bringing it down here money money really talks doesn't it yeah I'd like to talk about uh, servicing your bike looking after your bike really uh, I do all my own servicing, you know, all the old changes, plugs and stuff like that, air filters. And I done the Harley on, I think it was last Sunday, I done a full service on a Harley. Uh, never done one before on a Harley, but uh, got my manual out, went on the YouTube, looked at a few channels that do them, uh, showing you how to do bits and pieces, just got on with it, it was a piece of cake. Now, that service would have cost me God knows how much money look at this it's just gorgeous how much money that would have cost me at a Harley dealer or even my main dealer and I think my main dealer is about 60 or 70 pound to 80 pound an hour so you know I saved myself a very big dodge of money I missed that I could have shown you that that's unbelievable 
Yeah, I could have, uh, you know, cost you no know, cost me a bloody fortune. No, I can't see it there. Yeah, it would have cost me a bloody fortune. Now, when it comes to servicing, years ago I didn't bother that much. I just used to take the shop or whatever, get it done. But as the years have gone by, uh, I don't know if that's because I got older, I got more interested in the mechanical side of things. Um, so I decided to start doing stuff myself, you know, about, oh God knows how many years ago. Too many to mention. But I started doing it all myself and I've done it ever since. Well, I've heard people say, well, I'm not confident enough to service a bike or work on a bike. You know, I'm not very good with spanners. I haven't got, you know, a spanner hand, as they say. There you go, a little English pub the ship very nice and of course another church <laughs> oh this is gorgeous around here yeah and they say they're not confident you know but I'll tell you what if you know loads of bikers or you've got a few biker friends somebody amongst them will be and if you say to them you know can you give me a hand I want to service my bike and there's been a typical uh, a typical one like that well even biker Asked Mr. B if he'd help him service his bike. And he said, yeah, bring your bike up, I'll get the parts and we'll do it. And he supervised him. He got he got Wyvern Biker to service his bike. And I'll tell you what, he was so chuffed that he'd done it. It was unbelievable. So there's always somebody out there who'll give you a hand to, to get started. And once you've done it once, you'll realise how simple in most bikes or most cases it is. You know, to change your oil, your plugs, your air filters, and, you know, grease up your bike and stuff like that. You know, it's it's quite an easy thing. It's just having confidence to do it. So I say to anybody out there, you know, if you haven't got the confidence, get somebody to come and give you a hand to show you. My God, this is a drop. And there's always somebody will, you know. Get yourself some decent tools. You haven't got to go and buy every tool there is to have. Just a, a, you know, a basic tool kit. You know, a decent kit will get you through it. You don't need, you know, lifts. You don't need this. You don't need that. You don't need anything. Just a small, decent, compact kit of tools. And you'll be away. There's always the specialised tools you'll need for, you know, bigger jobs. But for service and that, on the whole, it's pretty damn easy. Right, this is the Orwell Park School. I'll go this way. It's a huge, great building. Uh, it's mainly, <coughs> as far as I'm concerned, for rich kids, rich parents' kids to go to. It's a private school, but I think they want to build on it. Luxury homes. I did want to show you the observatory, which I could see from the road further down, but I can't see from here, which is a pity. Ah, ha, ha. Right, there you go. You can see that big green dome there that's where they look at the stars that's the observatory they got a big telescope in there so there you go yeah so this is the eight side of the big private school it was for girls it's where all the rich kids come all the little girlies and of course a church! <laughs> you cannot get away from churches in Suffolk, folks. I do my best, okay? I do my best, but I can't escape. They're every bloody where. <laughs> well, I think uh, I've probably got... I think I've probably got far too much for a 10 minute vlog here take me ages to sort it all out 
So, I think that's enough from me. I'm gonna get home before all this rain starts. As you can see, it's now looking dodgy. I've got about, I don't know, five miles to go, so quick dash. So, that's enough from me. Ride safe, everybody. Love each other. Something handy!